operating the sawmill is highly enjoyable. Putting it together is a very frustrating exercise. The parts are not marked, the instructions are clunky, and no amount of IKEA or Lego blocks will prepare you for it. Watch this video. For key parts of the assembly, we made five mistakes and so you can avoid them. Everything arrived packed in a crate and shrink wrapped, so it's safe in terms of the weather if it needs to sit outside for a couple days. Inside. This is light. Whoa. The insides are fairly well packed, and the main engine is fully assembled and housed inside this crate. Oh, wait. Hey, look at that. The OS23, uh, pretty much unboxed at this point. The heavy stuff is still in there. We're figuring out how to get that out. We've got all of the other pieces here. We're gonna gather them up, get them down to the assembly site, and figure out what to do with the engine and the rails. And uh, we'll see you back when we figure it out. Our assembly site is about a quarter from quarter mile from where it got dropped off, just the way the property is situated, you may be in a different position. So we had to unbox everything, get all of the parts down, and we used the tractor to lift the sawmill and put it in the shed. That was actually mistake number one, because the more you can keep stuff inside the boxes, the easier your assembly will be. So the plan is to start working on the base. The hardware is fairly well labeled. That was a rookie statement. I learned along the way that it really wasn't. But the first part is to put the bunks on the tracks and you're gonna put them on the pieces of the track that are free. Once you put those pieces together, now you're gonna have to join uh, parts of the tracks together. We had an extra track because we got an extension. So depending what you buy, you can get two or three of these parts. To join the parts, you will have this plate. You will use extra bolts to put them together and then the bunk will go on top of the metal seam. The stuff is pretty heavy and at this point everything should still be just finger tight and because you'll still need to move it quite a bit you'll need to level it so do not tighten anything at this point. And here's the bunk that needs to connect in the middle and it holds the pieces together. hardware is not very well marked after all, so those are the bolts you'll need to assemble the next part. These are the yellow alignment tracks and uh, there's an additional bracket that holds everything together. We actually made a mistake here, um, which is corrected later, but my recommendation would be when you're reading the manual look at both kind of step-by-step -step instructions and large illustrations very engineering schematics to compare and figure things out it is really not clear how everything comes together 
and the part because the parts don't really have numbers corresponding to the instructions you're doing a lot of deciphering But at this point, you should have more or less the track complete. Obviously, it still needs legs and additional parts. But we needed to then get the saw head down to the assembly site. Again, it's a quarter mile down the road for us. Yours may vary, but in case you're building something off grid, just like we are, we fashion the sled. To drag the saw head down a quarter mile of the road stretch the roads not well graded we're still really early in the process of developing this land if you're curious in the process of building the sled and dragging this very heavy piece of equipment down to our build site there's a separate video This wasn't a trivial process and we were very stressed about it, but in retrospect, it was one of the simplest things compared to how complicated the saw mill assembly is. And this is us realizing the mistake we made with the alignment tracks. They should go on the outside, not inside. Putting these brackets on becomes much easier. It all starts to make a lot more sense. At this point, slide the legs in, just put them in, don't level them yet. You'll also put on these carriage stop brackets. At this point, the instructions call for installing the log wrist bar and the log dog bar. I would recommend holding off. They add a lot more weight to your assembly. So in the event you're leveling it and moving it, keep the weight down. Those parts are very easy to put on at any moment and you can move them at any time. They're completely unobstructed. But speaking of leveling, this is where we realized our track was not level at all. We used our eye to kind of look at the patch of the ground and it looked pretty straight to us. The problem is we're completely off grid on sloping ground in the mountains and we didn't have a reference point. We thought maybe something was wrong with the level. At this point we got our laser level out and it's just too far off we realized it was about a couple of feet drop. So no matter how much shimming we did, it was impossible to level the track. So if you want to avoid our mistake, we recommend starting with this, where we actually had to correct for that. Take a string, the length of your track, put it in the ground, use the laser level. Uh, the reason I'm holding that cardboard box is just to trace the laser line. It's very bright, it's hard to see it. And look at the drop and find the most level ground. 23, that's the ticket. Yep. That's only a three inch change. Another mistake to avoid in case you do need to move the track, take the pieces apart so you have two to three pieces and move those separately they're much easier and lighter to move around it will take you a while to level the track 
Use the laser level, go bunk to bunk, side to side, make sure it's all level. These came partially assembled, so the instructions didn't quite match. Uh, the instructions make it appear as if the direction of the knot matters. It does not matter. What matters is there's one of the bars that's different than the others, and you will see later on it does matter where that one is. I had to redo this a couple of times. I kept forgetting the washers. Take it on and off and put the washers in. The bar that matters is this shorter one with the four extra holes at the top. It does need to go on the operator side. It will all make sense. Two things to note here, the whole assembly needs to be a little bit high off the ground because you will need to kind of wiggle these in and if it's too close to the ground you will not have enough clearance. Secondly, you see that bar with the four extra holes, it needed to be on the other side. So it does need to be on the operator side, the operator side is the one that has the winch handle and this tensioning T rod. The rest of the cover was fairly straightforward, except the bolts didn't quite match the instructions. One of the most frustrating parts was this winch drum and winch shaft. It took three or four tries to put it in the correct way. You'll need to make a sandwich of these brackets and the bearing and then you will need to put that whole assembly in and make it flush on the non-operator side. It's not clear how you're going to put it in. Flush works. Threading the lift cables was shockingly pretty straightforward and the instructions were pretty clear and the pictures were pretty clear. Wait, you're looping it? Okay. your classroom. Did you eat it? Yes. The winch tensioner box came fully assembled, again, didn't quite match the instructions, but actually made it easier. At this point, you will have to figure out how to lift this saw head and put it on the tracks.
we have just recently cleared this patch of ground specifically to put the sawmill so there's still a lot of stumps so operating a tractor was a little slow and we're being very careful While it might be possible to do it with just one person, you really should have a couple of people, one person navigating the saw head, another person adjusting and making sure it fits the tracks. At this point you're almost there, at least you can kind of try going up and down the track, it feels pretty rewarding. We did film some of the more straightforward parts, the throttle connector is pretty straightforward, the emergency stop is pretty straightforward, and we got the auto loop system, so yours may vary. And that one actually matched the instructions the, pretty well. Like, I did not like how the cable cut in front of the emergency stop. We tried mounting it on the inside, but it didn't work, so you have to go on the outside. The instructions did not match connecting it to the throttle. The instructors didn't match the assembly? No, they did not. Shocking. No S hook. No S hook needed. This is your water on the blade side. This is one way of opening a blade. All right, what's supposed to happen? Per, as per photo, you're putting them on those wheels. Uh huh with the teeth protruding as per photo, and they should be pointing towards the dust exit. So outwards, I guess. While somewhat frustrating, and it probably takes practice, the instructions here actually matched pretty well. You should repeat the exercise multiple times. This is the tensioner T that the instructions mention. What happens here is the proper alignment of the blade of these wheels and the proper tension, not too much tension and not too loose. It will get take a few tries. You'll need to make a number of adjustments, but again, the instructions are fairly straightforward. Put the gas in and you're ready to roll. <laughs> 